So what's going on guys, Kate is here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the best war dancer PvE build in Lost Ark. So in this guide I will show you what abilities and awakening skill you want to get. Then I will explain what are the best engravings and cards to use for any game content. And then lastly I will show you the best gameplay and even which stats you need to allocate for PvE. So you would be able to get the best results and highest damage possible and much more. So no matter how low or high level or gear score your character is, you can easily use this build and follow the step by step guide. So if this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So the War Dancer is one of the highest mobility classes in Lost Ark, with skills like the Lightning Kick. This skill has low cooldowns and increases the overall traveling speed during the leveling and dungeon farming process. She lacks AUV skills, but makes up for it with high single target damage abilities. This build mainly focuses on swiftness, which increases the movement speed, attack speed and reduces the cooldowns of all of your skills. And then at the end game, we will be using the esoteric skill enhancement engraving, which will give us a extra orb that will give us a lot more damage and much more. So if you're looking for the best leveling, raiding, chaos dungeon or any other PvE content build, then this is the one for you. Okay, so now let's move over to the build itself and these are the skills you want to have. So then for the first ability we have the Rising Fire Dragon and this time we use just 7 levels to unlock the Lucky Bubble and Focus Strike. And then lastly for your rune you want to get the Gale Wind. Then for the second ability we have the Flash Heat Fang and we use 7 more levels to select the Fist of Darkness and Weak Point Detection. And then for your rune you want to get the Judgment. Then for the next one we have the Roar of Courage ability and we use 10 levels to unlock the Elemental Extortion, Supreme Ruler After Mage and Fatal Wave. And then lastly for your rune you want to get the Wealth. Then for the 4th ability we have the Wind's Whisper and we use 10 more levels to select the Oath of Wind, Wind's Whisper and Ready Attack. And then for your rune you want to get the focus. Then for the next one we have the sky shattering blow skill. And we use this time just 4 levels to unlock the excellent mobility. And then for your rune you want to get the bleed. So then for one of the last abilities we have the lightning kick. And we use 10 levels to select the sharp movement, thunder kick and flash lightning. And then for your rune you want to get the quick recharge. Then for the 7th ability we have the moon flash kick. And we use once again 10 levels to select the white flame kick single strike and full moon kick and then lastly for your rune you want to get the wealth and then for the last and final ability we have the energy combustion and we use our last seven levels to select the combustible armor and intense battle and then for your rune you want to get the conviction then as well after level 50 for your awakening skill you want to get the fist of dominance but if you haven't reached level 50 yet then here is a specific guide on which abilities you should upgrade first while leveling with the War Dancer. And then on top of all this, focus on equipping as high item level gear as you can. And then at the end game, you should have around 530 specialization and 1070 swiftness. But again, if you haven't reached this point yet, then try to have around 70% stats into swiftness and the rest 30% stats into specialization. Okay, so then the way I would recommend to upgrade this build is at level 50, you will get around 250 points. So this is how your build should look like. But then by doing more and more endgame content, you will get more points. And at the absolute endgame, this is how your build should look like with all the 414 skill points. So at the start, you use the 256 point build. And then by leveling up and completing quests, you will get more points. So just keep on improving your skills and getting higher tier runes as well. So then let's move over to the engravings and you want to get the esoteric skill enhancement. This engraving will increase your esoteric skill damage which is very important to be able to do consistent DPS. So then for the second engraving we have the master of ambush and since your war dancer relies on back attacks for extra 10% crit rate this engraving adds extra damage on top of all this. Then the next one is called the keen blunt weapon. And because our build has more than 60% crit rate, getting increased crit damage will come very handy to increase our overall damage. Then for the fourth engraving you want to get the adrenaline and this will stack up your attack power even up to 6 times. 
and at level 3 you will get up to 15% extra crit rate. Then the next one is called the grudge and this is more advanced engraving that is recommended for tier 3 content. This grudge is the most efficient engraving against mobs and you will get your damage increased but in return you will take 20% more damage. So when you get to the very end game content which is called the tier 3 then get this engraving and before using it get it to at least level 2 because at level 1 this engraving is not that efficient. And then for the last one we have the curse doll and this is a significant attack power increase at the cost of 25% healing penalty. This penalty can be offset by paying more attention on dodging red AOE circles and by using healing potions more often. So then in a quick summary, I would recommend to get the top 3 engravings first and then the bottom 3. And then last but not the least, let's move over to your cards. And you want to get the Shandy, Azena and Ainana, Ninaven, Vey, Baldur and Tyrane. In general, these cards are an endgame system for maximizing your character, so you don't have to get them right away, but these specific cards will optimize your damage output in PvE even more. I did bunch of testing for this build and this was the best and most optimized card set. Ok so then moving over to the gameplay, and if you have played this class while leveling, you will be very familiar with the skills, so I will just try to give you a short description. So then for the first two abilities we have the Wind's Whisper and Roar of Courage, and these are your main two skills that will give you and your party members increased attack and movement speed, and then at the same time you will debuff the enemy by reducing their crit resistance. Then the next ability called the Sky Shattering Blow is your one and only counter attack that will counter the enemy's attack and you will inflict a bunch of damage as well. Then the next four abilities called the Lightning Kick, Flash Heat Fang, Moon Flash Kick and Energy Combustion are your just four main basic damage abilities that will do very quick damage to the enemies multiple times and they are mainly meant to build up your orbs as fast as possible. And then for the last ability we have the esoteric skill called the Rising Fire Dragon and we will be able to use this ability when at least few of our orbs are filled and the more orbs are filled the higher damage you will be able to do. And then last but not the least for your awakening skill we have the Fist of Dominance and this is a very powerful skill that will release a energy shield and you'll be able to jump past enemies 6 different times and each time you will do damage then you will knock them back and lastly while the skill is active you will get a plus 80% damage reduction. I usually recommend to use this ability in crucial situations so you would get that 80% damage reduction and you would be able to do massive amount of damage at the same time. Ok so then let's take a closer look at your base skill rotation and as we are using the esoteric skill enhancement engraving our main gameplay revolves around generating 3 to 4 elemental orbs for increased damage with your esoteric skills and then doing massive amounts of burst damage. So the highest damage rotation is to first of all generate 3 to 4 orbs from using the energy combustion, moon flash kick, flash heat fang, wind's whisper and roar of courage. Then at this point you should have filled up a bunch of your orbs. So activate your glowing ability aka the esoteric skill called the rising fire dragon and then we finish this off with the lightning kick. Then during our skill downtime we use our basic attacks by holding the movement button while tapping basic attack repeatedly. So we keep on doing this till our Vince Whisper and Roar of Courage abilities come back up and then we repeat the same process. So let's see what we did in this rotation. We used our 3 basic damage skills to build up the orbs then we activated our 2 main buffs that will increase our damage and lower the enemies. Then from here we just used our most powerful skills which we unlocked from our orbs and that's about it. So now in my last and final conclusions for this build. This Void Dancer is built around building up your orbs to do massive amounts of damage. At the first build which is the 256 point build we will get one esoteric skill but later down the line in the 414 build we will get two esoteric skills. So we basically build up our orbs and then do massive amounts of damage. Then your main two skills for damage buffs is the Vince Whisperer and Roar of Courage. Then as well I would recommend to always save your energy combustion ability as it does a decent amount of damage when the rest of your skills are on cooldown. And then lastly you will do good stagger and high damage so be aware of your positioning in the endgame dungeons and that's about it. So I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other good Lost Ark PvE classes that you would like to see in the next video, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell, so this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said, you have an amazing day and I'll catch you in my next video. So take it easy, peace.